Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. We have an interesting show today and the title of the show is Fine Fishing Destinations. Now many anglers, they travel throughout the season chasing these hot bites and there really are prime time windows of opportunity for all different kinds of species. And the key is being in the right place at the right time. For example, in the springtime, fish are generally concentrated shallow prior to and immediately after the spawn, and they're feeding aggressively. You want to catch big walleye right now? Well, I'm thinking Green Bay in Wisconsin and the Missouri River system. Here in Minnesota, for numbers and size, Leech Lake, Lake Vermilion, and then Dakotas, specifically, you know, I'm thinking of South Dakota and the Glacial Lakes region, great for walleye right now. And for smallmouth anglers, Schwamigan Bay and Sturgeon Bay, big bronze backs over there, especially in the springtime, as well as Little and Big Bay Dinoc. In today's show, we're joined by Al Linder. He's caught about everything that swim. He's traveled all over North America, and he's gonna help us understand these peak fishing periods. You hit the nail on the head, Troy. Seasonal movements happen for all species of fish, and there's three peak periods that are predictable. Fish make predictable seasonal movements. And uh, one of them naturally is spring of the year. That pre-spawn movement of fish where you got a lot of fish consolidated in an area together and they're generally pretty active most of the time. This is a seasonal peak you definitely want to take advantage of. Then as the season goes on, you come out of that, that pre-spawn, everything goes into spawn, gets a little bit mixed up for a little while, and then it starts to come out of it, stabilizes again, and then there's what we call the summer peak. The fish are all done spawning, and uh, example, largemouth bass and, and, and bluegills and crappies I have, are all off the beds, and they start making use, heavy use, of the first weed line or first drop off, first break line in any lake, river, or reservoir that you're, that, that you're fishing. And you got the smallmouth and walleye would be more concentrated on deeper rock structures. They start bunching up again. They're really, really active. So understanding these seasonal peaks and taking advantage of them is really, really critical to maximize the bite for sure. Those are some great points to remember. Yeah, it's important to move with the fish. Not only, you know, we're talking about weekly movements and daily movements, sometimes even hourly, depending on the forage and weather conditions. What can you talk about, you know, moving with the fish? Hey, every time you're on the water, it's a new day. Things change daily, weekly. Uh, you, you could have had a, a front come through the night before you're out there. That could mean fishing is gonna be a little bit slower. You have to slow your presentations down. Uh, it might be a prefrontal condition, and the fish are really active and chewing. You can fish a little bit more aggressively. This happens on a daily basis. And every time you're on the water, you gotta keep an open mind. Those fish are always adjusting to local weather and water conditions, and you need to be doing the same thing. Okay, and what are some other peak periods that we should be aware of throughout the season? My favorite time of the year, fall right after the lakes turn over. Usually when the water temperatures get to around 56, something like that, the lakes have already flipped over. You're starting to see a fall movement of fish and the consolidation starts to happen again. And the colder it gets, the more these fish gather together. They all do it, every fish that swims. Again, these, these patterns become predictable. But that fall transition period is my favorite time. My personal best species of every freshwater fish, without exception, have all been caught in this fall transition period. Usually around that magic temperature range of about 48 to 52, time to catch big fish. The biggest fish in the system are the most aggressive fish at this time of the year. You don't want to miss this time period if you can make it happen. Yes, and I know you like to catch a lot of different kinds of fish. You also like to move around a lot, and many times that's key to find biting fish. Well, thanks, Dad, for your time and sharing some great information. Well, stay with us. We have more fine fishing destinations as Angling Buzz continues.
the Rumble Series from Northland Tackle. This line of crankbaits will up your walleye game. The Rumble Shiner, the Rumble Shad, the Rumble Stick, the Rumble Bug. Premium balsa baits with the durability, action, colors, and fishability that trigger the bites. True on the troll and go the distance on the cast. The Rumble Series from Northland Tackle. We are Walleye. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Developed from the latest technology, Blackfish Technical Apparel outperforms, so anglers have gear that they can trust in, no matter the conditions. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our highlight destination feature. And here at The Buzz, we focus on the upper Midwest and also different provinces throughout Canada. Now our next guest, he's not only traveled throughout North America, but he's traveled throughout the world. He's a very successful videographer, photographer, and a very successful YouTuber, and that's Jay Siemens. Now Jay, I know you work a lot with Travel Manitoba. Yeah, Troy, I've been very fortunate to work with Travel Manitoba the last few years with Huntfish Manitoba, and um, it's really opened my eyes to just how expansive Manitoba is and all the all the opportunities it has. It's broken into six main regions and each of them have their own unique, uh, amazing angling opportunities. Jay, can you kind of give us a breakdown of these different regions and the types of fishing that's available? Yeah, so probably the most popular region is the central region. That's Lake Winnipeg, Red River, Assiniboine River, and it's got amazing walleye fishing, amazing, some of the best cat fishing in the world. And what I like about the central region is you're close to Winnipeg, to that major hub. You're close to the airport if you're traveling in from out of town. It's only about an hour and a half from the border up to, you know, Lake Winnipeg. The Red River near Selkirk is actually named the catfish capital of the world. If you go to Selkirk, there's a giant catfish statue, Charlie the Catfish. And anywhere really from Lockport, uh, the big floodway there, um, all the way to where it flows into Lake Winnipeg is just probably more fish per capita than maybe anywhere in North America. It is loaded with carp, with catfish, with drum, with buffalo, with walleye, with saugers, with sturgeon. It is, uh, it is a very healthy ecosystem. And then you've got the Eastern region as well, which is a little more your typical Canadian shield. That's what you, a lot of people picture when they think of Canada. It's these big sloping rock cliffs and you've got bass, you've got walleyes, you've got crappies, you've got the Nopaming Park, the White Shell Park, um, the whole Winnipeg River system, it's, it's very diverse. Now, when we look at the northern part of the province, there's some big lakes up there. It looks very interesting. Can you tell us about that? The northern region has a special place in my heart. It's, um, it is the true north. You know, a lot of people view as soon as you cross the border being the true north, but I view, I view up there. You know, you got Clearwater Lake, Athapap Lake, Reed Lake, Wacusco. Those are some of the, the big, you know, lake trout, pike, walleye lakes, they've got massive fish. If you want to catch a 45 inch pike, a 40 inch lake trout, a 30 inch walleye, those lakes have the potential to, to make that happen. And the cool thing is it's paved roads all the way north of some of those locations. So it's not tough to get to. You're kind of getting that fly in style quality of fishing, but you can drive to them. Now, what about the trout fishing in the Parkland region? This seems like a bucket list destination for trout anglers. Yeah, so the Parkland region is another phenomenal area, especially if you like stillwater trout fishing. It's some of the best stillwater trout fishing. People come from all across to sample this fishing because a lot of these lakes are actually stocked. These trout aren't natural. And these lakes are so fertile. They're kind of shallower farm style pothole lakes. And with the invertebrates and the freshwater shrimp, 
they'll stock trout in these lakes and they'll grow to 20 inches in just a couple years. So you got tiger trout, brook trout, brown trout, rainbow trout. Um, you know, the Duck Mountains is kind of the hub for a lot of these lakes, but just the whole surrounding area is just a really, really trouty spot. Last but not least, you got the Western region, which has a bit of everything. You've got Lake of the Prairies a little farther up the province there, which is phenomenal pike, perch, walleye fishing. That lake is just a fish factory. You head down to the south corner, you've got bluegills, you've got smallmouth, you've got stock trout. So it's kind of this cool little, you know, mini system inside of itself. And you don't have to travel far and you can cross a lot of species off the list. Um, yeah, it's every region is a little bit different, but uh, if you're willing to travel, you can sample some pretty diverse fishing in Manitoba. Now, Jay, what about the lodging and facilities in these different regions? Yeah, so a lot of these destinations we've been talking about are, you know, drive to drive to locations. And there's lots of fantastic accommodations at, at most of these lakes I've mentioned. But beyond that, depending on your budget, if you want to fly in, Manitoba has a, a wide array of fly in lodges as far as all inclusive to the do it yourself outpost style camps. And you know, whatever you want to do as a fisherman, you can definitely find it in Manitoba. Well, there are a lot of options for sure. That sounds like some incredible fishing. Thanks, Jay, for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about Travel Manitoba. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. We got our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. In 2021, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 95% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Hey, Jason Mitchell here checking with Angling Buzz Fishing Report. You know, we're just starting to get boats out on Devil's Lake. For the most part, we're pretty much ice free. But with that being said, you know, I think the big, big portion of the fish are getting caught so far have been caught from shore, you know, which is a great opportunity. You can wear waders, mud boots, and focus on those current areas, you know, bottleneck areas, whether it's around bridges, box culverts, you know, anything that narrows down the flow of current and causes a current seam coinciding with a riprap or rock, those are, the, those are the spots right now where we're catching a lot of fish. And so there's been some big fish caught and uh, fishing these types of locations is basically just casting jigs and plastics, you know, a quarter ounce to three eighths ounce, uh, four inch plastic profiles where it's at. You know, mimic minnows work really well. Can't go wrong with mimic minnows. You know, just a three to four inch soft plastic paddle tail profile is getting it done. And just cast and reel, slow drag. The water's still pretty dirty from all this runoff. I mean, if you can see four to six inches, that's good. Use those bright colors, four inch profile, just a slow drag. And that's what's working right now to catch a lot of walleye. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head over to Leech Lake with Toby Cavallivog. The water temperatures are creeping up. We're getting into the 50s now, and the fish are finishing spawn, and they're moving to where the bait fish are, and the shiners are moving shallow. So we're having this buffet, buffet that's developing up in the shallow water. Where in the shallow water? Where the warmest water is. That's real important for Leech Lake. Find that warmer water, find the bait. Walleyes won't be far behind. Jigs and minnows, jigs and shiners, jigs and plastics, jigs and fatheads, jigs and minnows, that profile, that's what they're looking for. That's what you need to give them. Now, not all jigs are equal. Uh, when it's flat calm and or there's maybe a little bit of a in-between bites when it's a high pressure system, something real, real small, drug on the bottom. Jig and a minnow, uh, this is a stand-up jig from North of the Fish and Tackle. Worked really good on Saturday uh, in the morning before the, the wind picked up and the fish got real active. We caught fish on that. Uh, bigger jigs, quarter ounce, three eighths ounce jig. When the wind picked up, you want to go with the bigger profile. And when the wind's blowing and you get in those peak periods, you can snap it pretty good, drift through them. Everybody's catching fish. The fishing's good on Leech Lake. We'll see you up there. Thanks, Toby. 
Now let's head north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Just a heads up for everybody coming up here this next week. Uh, the water's really, really high on Vermilion. Uh, there's a lot of floating debris in the water and this is probably gonna go on for a couple weeks. So just uh, be careful out there. The walleye bite is holding its own. Our water temperatures are starting to push that 50 degrees. Uh, the go-to pretty much has been the jigs. I like these VMC hardball and the moon eyed jigs. Those are all producing with a rainbow. Uh, the good old Lindy rig, you know, with a slip sinker and like a five foot leader putting walleyes in the boat. Uh, the areas we're catching fish is a lot of your bottlenecked areas, those pinched down areas between a point and island, those type of areas. The depths kind of all vary, but there's fish in all those areas, those pinch points. And also don't forget those deep holes on Vermilion. Uh, those smaller age class fish, those ones we all want for dinner, are in those deeper holes from 25 to 30 feet. And those fish are in there eating bugs off of that mud on the bottom. So don't forget about those deep holes. Have a great week and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's jump over to Wisconsin with Jeff Evans in the Hayward area. The walleyes are all done spawning and they're starting to gravitate towards those first weed beds that are starting to pop up. On dark water lakes, you're gonna to wanna to look anywhere around six to eight feet of water. And clear water lakes, you're gonna to wanna to look from 10 to 12 feet of water. A real good presentation is just a small, a 16th ounce weedless jig head tipped with a shiner or a sucker minnow and just cast it out right into those weeds, work towards the outside edge and just pop it through the weeds. Uh, the fish just seem to be getting more aggressive each day as the water's warming up. Uh, crappies are starting to really move into the shallows now. Uh, most of them haven't spawned yet on most of the lakes, uh, but they're getting ready to. And uh, finding good standing weeds uh, seems to be key in six to eight feet of water. And we're catching them using small uh, plastic suspended underneath a slip bobber. And uh, that bite's been really, really consistent uh, over the last few days. Uh, Smallmouth bass are moving in shallow. Most fish are in less than 10 feet of water uh, in pre-spawn, uh, suspending jerk baits and hair jigs have been working really well. Thanks Jeff. Let's head back west to the Duluth area with Jared Houston. The tributaries including the St. Louis River which we're on, bad fishing, too much debris, high turbid current, velocity. It's been really tricky and not getting a lot of fish so we've been moving inland and using a series of tactics. Everybody that knows me knows I love the RZ jig, tipping that with some live minnows and or a half of a crawler. My preferred method has been, and which has been more successful, some hair jigs. This color, fishing that kind of uh, coffee stained water in our reservoirs and our flowages north of Duluth. I'm talking white face, boulder, island lake, and, and, the, and the gamut. So right now it's been walleyes for the most part. Pike have been just on fire for sure. You want to get a lot of pike? Cold water, very active. Um, and then the pan fishing, the crappies, we're still waiting those out. That's the story in our neck of the woods. Hopefully everybody's out getting having some fun. Rock and roll, tie lines! Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Help your engine run better and last longer with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam is safe and easy to use in all types of cars and trucks. Just pour it in your fuel tank. When added to fuel, Seafoam works to clean and lubricate your entire fuel system. Helps engines start easier and run smoother. Reduces long-term engine wear and helps prevent costly engine problems. Make the proven choice. Seafoam Motor Treatment. Available at Fleet Farm. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com.
fishing is all about connecting with nature. Then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start off with the Bubba Electric Filet Knife. This is lithium ion powered. This is great if you're camping out in the field, out in your boat. It comes with four different blade sizes, seven inch up to 12 inch, and then also flex or stiff blade. And this is portable too, so you can plug in and recharge it. If you're, if you're going camping again, this is perfect. If you're out in the boat and filleting, this is perfect. And also if you're going through a lot of fish. From Bubble Blade, the electric lithium ion powered fillet knife. And up next, some swim baits and some new color options from Big Bite Baits. This is the Suicide Shad. Now you can see these are really bright colors, primarily, I mean, look at these. I'm thinking walleye and smallmouth bass without question. They have a lot of action in the tail, just tie it on like a quarter ounce, three eighth ounce jig head, slow roll it, snap jig it, and you're gonna be set some great new color options in the Suicide Shad series from Big Bite Baits. And next from Northland Tackle, the Mimic Minnow Shad. This is great because you just tie it on and cast it. It's that easy. These are already pre-rigged in some nice bright colors. These would be great for bass fishing and also for big slab crappie as well. And if you're new to swim baits, these are perfect because again, they're pre-rigged. The Mimic Minnow Shad from Northland Tackle. And next, one of my favorite lures from Rapala, the Rapala Jig and Wrap. This isn't only for ice fishing, these can be used year round. These are great for snap jigging for walleye. You pop them off the bottom, triggers them to bite. You can also catch suspended fish like bass and trout, especially for trout. This is a game changer. I've kayaked fish, I've caught a ton of trout with this. Some bright new color patterns, and this is really key. Some fish like walleye and trout, they like bright patterns. You wanna check this out in the Rapala Jig and Wrap series. And for fishing reels, this is probably one of the best all around values you can find in the Revros. This is the 2500. This is an LT series, that means light and tough. This reel, this size 2500 LT from Daiwa is arguably, I'd say, one of the best all around values you can find in a spinning reel. And next from Seafoam, this is Seafoam High Mileage. Now this is formulated for vehicles over 75,000 miles and it works both in fuel and oil systems to clean and lubricate critical engine areas. It also helps reduce engine wear and really increases the performance and longevity of your vehicle, Seafoam High Mileage. And now I know some anglers, they like to night fish or if you also camp, this is perfect if both of those situations pertain to you. This is a high power headlamp from Wavy Label. It has a nice strong center beam that actually shoots out to up to 100 meters. You get a couple side beams if you're retying at night or walking around your campsite or walking around at night. This is a, a great option. You just plug it in, you can recharge it. This is a fantastic high powered headlamp from Wavy Label. And next, the Lakes and Rivers backpack. This is actually a Fleet Farm brand. And as you can see, this is a great backpack if you're hiking or you're camping or even a, a day trip out in the boat. You see lots of storage spaces in here. Uh, nice comfortable back. You got a chest strap in here if you're hiking long distance. And then also rod holders on the side from Lakes and Rivers, the Pro Series backpack. And next from Clam Outdoors, the Fortis TD-195. And this net in the Fortis series is newly designed. You can see it has a teardrop. The TD stands for teardrop, so it has a different design. But it also has the excellent rubber-coated polyester net to help protect fish, a nice deep hoop on here. You have an engraved ruler on here. The handle extends out very, very far, as well as you have a glide lock technology for a quick release of the handle from Clam. This is the Fortis TD-195. And lastly, from FlowFast, the portable fluid transfer system. This is a professional model pump, and it pumps up to eight gallons per minute. This is great for marine, for your boat dock. You can keep this in your boathouse, in your garage. Also, for lawn and garden and power sports, if you have an ATV, UTV, this is great. This is the portable fluid transfer system from FlowFast. 
Be sure to shop online at fleetfarm.com. You can also visit your local Fleet Farm store. And right now you can save 30% off Blackfish UPF gear through May 30th. And up next, it's our technique of the week. You know, one of the rewards of fishing on a Canadian fishing trip is a nice shore lunch. Nothing beats going up to shore after you catch a nice batch of walleyes or lake trout and having a nice fresh meal. And typically when you go to a resort and go on a guided trip, that comes with a package or you can request it. But when we go up there on our own, we often pack a kit for ourselves so we can make our own shore lunch. And actually it's not as complicated as you think. And right here in front of me, I've got kind of all the stuff that we bring with us when we go on a trip. So starting over here, bring a cutting board. And then I've got a fillet knife and a steel to keep it sharp. Of course, we've got fish batter, some panko and original to mix together. And for the fish batter, I usually bring with a um, Ziploc bag to mix the batter in, some paper towels, peanut oil, some utensils and a paper plate for putting the fish on. And then below this, I have a platter to put the fish on when you're done. And up front, this is probably one of the most key ingredients to a good shore lunch, is a big cast iron skillet. So that way when you build a fire, you can put the skillet over the fire and you're not going to worry about ruining a pan. Um, along with that, of course, we got matches to light the fire. We got a little cut, our little pot here for beans, with beans. And then a can opener to open the can, of course. Got a spatula and a tong, little device here for flipping the fish. And then all of that is getting stored into this little Instacrate. So you pack all this into your boat. There's gonna be room left over to put your perishables like potatoes, onions, and butter. So when you're all done, you got a nice little handy kit for doing a shore lunch out in the wilderness when you're fishing with your buddies. Boy, it's tough to beat fresh caught fish for shore lunch. It beats any restaurant view and the flavor of the fish, incredible. Well, join us next week. We're gonna be switching gears to smallmouth bass. Here we go, boys. And as always here on The Buzz, we want to help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water. Remember, clean, drain, dry. Be sure to follow us online, Facebook and Instagram. It's simply Angling Buzz and also anglingbuzz.com. We go even more in depth on our buzz bite reports. We get articles and videos to help you catch more fish throughout the entire season. And we have our annual sweepstakes in conjunction with Fleet Farm. You can enter online at fleetfarm.com and also your local Fleet Farm store and win an incredible weekend up on Lake Vermilion. We're talking big walleye, big smallmouth, big musk. It's just a big fish factory and you have an awesome stay at a fantastic resort up on there. Definitely a memory maker. This lake here is about as fun as it gets. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Lindner and we'll see you next time.